3D printing came along and it really offered some great opportunities to create not only beautiful, amazing design, but the kind of design that can change lives. So I've been involved in a number of different steps in 3D printed prostheses. For legs, for example, the idea originally was to address the challenge that there are simply more people in the world, far more people, who need prosthetic limbs than there ever will be enough doctors to address them. I started a company in that, looking at addressing just that, where art, design, and medicine can all work together. And then we finally sold it to a company called 3D Systems, who is one of the, the big players in the 3D printing world. And so being the Silicon Valley technology guy, I'm thinking, yeah, there's a solution, but it's a software solution. That you have to be able to scale exponentially, just like a video game, and not like creating more doctors, because that happens on its own. The idea was to create a, an algorithm, an app, where you could 3D scan the person's other leg run it through a software that could then generate a new leg for them by mirroring that geometry, running that through uh, the kind of processes that would create the knee, the ankle, compensate for the weight, create the socket, and then allow a leg to be 3D printed so that they could then print the new one and go for a walk. To me, one of the most important things about creating this, this project, it was called Prosthetic Fairings, and I started it 12 years ago was to address somebody's self-image and self-esteem. I've met many uh, amputees who, for example, had only worn pants because they just didn't like the look of what they had below the knee. Or they would take duct tape and socks and wrap it up to create a kind of a shape of a, a muscle in a normal human shape, but it never really quite worked. And so the idea was to say, okay, don't try to cover it. Don't wear pants over it. Make it so cool that you can't wait to let the world see. When you make a really beautiful prosthetic leg, not only do people passing by on the street not look at the person, feel awkward and look away, and then tell their kids, don't, don't look, look, look that way, <laughs> you know? As if that's improving the, the problem at all. It actually invites somebody to talk to them. So suddenly the person comes up to them and says, hey, that's really cool. Just that little bit of design created a bridge to society so that people connected more. I was teaching at Stanford and I had a student ask me, you're an industrial designer, not a medical person, right? And I said, yes, I have no medical background. I said, then what makes you think you have the right to do a medical product? And I thought about it and I was kind of ashamed for a second. I thought, well, a prosthetic limb, what makes a mechanical engineer think that they have the right to do something for the human spirit. They're not qualified. They didn't do any design in that vein. They did mechanical engineering. And a prosthetic limb is not just a way to keep you from falling over. The idea is to make you thrive. And so even though it didn't have medical application or mechanical application, it didn't solve any problems on those two fronts, it maybe addressed one that was perhaps more profound. It was psychological and social. And it made a person feel that they're beautiful again.